today i am going to discuss about inflorescence inflorescence means a group of flowers they are seen on a common axis and the stalk that bear that bears the cluster of flowers are called peduncle you know the stalk of a flower is called pedicel stalk of an leaf is called petiole similarly the stalk of an inflorescence is called peduncle bunches of flowers are carried on this peduncle and based on the pattern of arrangement of flowers on this peduncle inflorescences are are of different types so flower usually in a plant you can see flowers either in the solitary mode or in the bunches solitary means you can see single flower they are seen either terminally or uh, axillary but in the case of inflorescence you can see mainly three types of inflorescence one is racemos other is cymos and the third is special type of inflorescence first we can see the racemos inflorescence when 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 we are talking about the racemos inflorescence we have to uh, think about two important characters of racemos inflorescence one is the inflorescence axis or the peduncle is having an indefinite growth indefinite growth means the growth of the inflorescence axis is not checked by the development of a flower at its tip it is the indefinite growth of inflorescence axis and here the flowers are arranged in acropetal succession that means oldest flower at the base and younger one towards the tip oldest at the base and younger one towards the tip that is the racemos inflorescence important two characters of racemos inflorescence and the racemos inflorescence are again divided into the simple raceme panicle corymb spike spadix umbel capitulum or head and catkin or amentum these are the different types of racemos inflorescence second category is cymos where you can see uh, the cymos inflorescence are having two distinct characters again one is the growth of the inflorescence axis is not indefinite it is definite what what is what is the meaning of the definite growth of inflorescence axis here you know the tip of the inflorescence axis will bear a flower and that flower seen at the tip of the inflorescence axis will check the growth of that inflorescence axis so it is not having an indefinite growth in the case of cymos inflorescence similarly in cymos inflorescence flowers are arranged in basi petal succession basi petal succession that means oldest flower at the center younger one towards the periphery so this is the main difference between racemos and cymos inflorescence in racemos inflorescence axis is having a continuous growth flowers are arranged in acropetal succession in cymos in the inflorescence axis is having a definite growth that means the uh, tip of the inflorescence axis will bear the flower so that will check the growth of the inflorescence axis and here the inflorescence flowers are arranged in basi petal succession that means oldest at the center younger one towards the periphery these are the two important difference between racemos and cymos so now we can see the racemos in racemos the simple raceme panicle corymb spike spadix umbel capitulum or head and catkin or amentum first we can see the raceme simple raceme mean here the Uh, ped uh, peduncle is unbranched peduncle is uh, unbranched and on this peduncle the flowers are arranged in acropetal succession oldest at the base younger one towards the tip see indefinite growth for the inflorescence axis and the flowers are arranged in acropetal succession and the inflorescence axis is unbranched that is simple raceme example is cotyledonia and glyrisidia Glyrisidae is Shimakona. Crotlaria, you know, will come pretty well. Son. The next is panicle. That is the second type of racemos inflorescence, where the inflorescence, the peduncle is branched. It is branched, and that will be a many repeated units of flowers. And that repeated units means it may be either a simple raceme. or spike or corymb or umbel that means highly branched inflorescence axis and that branch each branch may be a 
either simple raceme or uh, spike or corim or even umpen. Here also two important characters are the indefinite growth for inflorescence axis and the flowers are arranged in acropita succession. Both are correct but the difference here is here the uh, peduncle is highly branched and this uh, the highly branched peduncle will carry the flowers in different mode either in spike or in raceme or in corim or in umpen. Mango and teak are the example you know mango, manchifera and teak, teak that is tectona grandis thick. Next is corimp. Corimp means that is also a type of racemos where the peduncle is unbranched, indefinite growth, flowers are arranged in acropita succession, all are correct. But one, one thing we have to remember, the length of the pedicels of the flowers in that inflorescence are unequal. Length of the pedicels of the flower in this inflorescence are unequal. Oldest flowers are having long pedicel, younger ones are having small pedicel to bring all the flowers in the same level, to bring all the flowers in the same level. See, you can see the diagram, all the flowers are seen in the same level. And example is Cisalpenia, you know Cisalpenia is Rajamalli and Gynanthropsis. Next is Spike, Spike means this is similar to simple regime, only one difference. In spike, the flowers are sessile, but in simple raceme, flowers are pedicellate. There is a difference between simple raceme and spike. Here also, the inflorescence axis is along the peduncle is unbranched. It is having indefinite growth, and the flowers are arranged in acropita succession, but the flowers are almost sessile. That is the main difference between spike and simple raceme. Example is erva. You know erva is cherula varanus. You know that. Next is Spadix. Spadix, le, the peduncle is fleshy and thick. And that carries sessile unisexual flowers. Peduncle is fleshy and thick. And that will carry unisexual and sessile flowers. Example, Colocasia, you know, chamber, Cocos, that is Tenginda Pokala, Cocos nucifera. Areca, Areca is Kavunga, Areca nut, you know, the Musa, Vara. You see, this is Colocasia inflorescence, this is Cocos inflorescence, Tengen Bukula. Here you see, the, the peculiarity of the spadix is, you can see a covering for the inflorescence. Here also a covering for the inflorescence. And that is called spathe, S-P-A-T-H-E. So the inflorescence axis is fleshy and succulent. It will bear sessile unisexual flowers and it is covered by a spathe. Next is umbel. Umbel means, here, this, here also the peduncle is unbranched, the flowers are in flo uh, peduncle is having indefinite growth, flowers are arranged in acropylar succession, but you know, individual flowers of the pedicels are originating from the same point on the peduncle. All the flowers in the umbel are arising from the same point, but it is not the tip of the peduncle. If it is stripped, that will cause the, uh, that will um, stop the growth of the peduncle. So the flowers are not arising from the tip, but it is just below the tip. But all flowers are arising from the same point. And inflorescence axis is having indefinite growth. That's okay. That's correct. And flowers arranged in acropita succession. That's also correct. But the, the, the total flowers seen in that inflorescence are arising from the same point, not from the tip, just below the tip. Example is Biophytum. Biophytum, you know that is Mukuti, Biophytum sensitiva. Next is Capitulum or Hedge. This is a peculiar type of inflorescence seen in racemos, seen in the family Astraceae, where you know the inflorescence peduncle is short, it is swollen, and flatten to, fall, to bear numerous sessile flowers. And that flattened peduncle, swollen flattened peduncle, is, uh, is covered by an involucre. And that involucre is, ma involucre is made up of bracts. So you can see an involucre in which the, you can see the involucre is uh, covering that uh, flattened apex of the uh, 
uh, inflorescence and that in uh, involucre is made up of bracts and this flattened area is carrying numerous flowers and the flowers here are called floret. You cannot call the flowers in the head or capitulum, uh, capitulum as that name. It is called as floret. Two types of florets you can see. One is disc floret or tubular floret. Other is ligulate floret or ray floret. Disc florets are seen usually at the center of this uh, involucre. And the uh, ray florets are seen at the marginal margin or at the rim of this involucre. They are usually looking like corolla. And they are strap-like, strap-shaped. The ray floret or ligulate are strap-shaped, whereas tubular or disc, disc florets are tubular shaped. So that there is a difference. Tubular or disc florets are having tubular corolla. Ligulate or ray florets are having strap-like corolla. You can see the diagram. This is the diagrammatic representation where you can see this is the involucre. This flattened structure is actually the apex of the, uh, like in the tip of the pedangle, and in which you can see it is encircled. Uh, sorry, it is encircled by um, capitulum. Uh, sorry, involucre, which is made up of certain bracts, and that is carrying many flowers. All these are flowers, not petals. The central flowers are called disc floret. And the peripheral ones are called ray florets. The, these are the ray florets. And the ray florets are having strap-shaped corolla. These florets are having tubular corolla. Okay. Usually ray florets are... Uh, they are uh, unisexual. They are usually fem unisexual flowers. Whereas these florets are bisexual. Unisexual especially they are female flowers. Ray florets are female flowers. These florets are bisexual flowers. Next is catkin or amentum. It is, it is a simple um, type of racemos where you know the inflorescence axis is pentulous. Pentulous inflorescence axis. I think a pedangle is pentulous and that carries many sessile unisexual flowers. Sessile unisexual flowers are seen on a pentulous pedangle. Then it is called catkin or amentum. You know this plant, this is Puchavalu Paranada, that is Acalypha. Acalypha is an example. So these are the diagrammatic representation of the racemose inflorescence. This is simple raceme, then panicle, spike, catkin, spadix, corim, umpel, compound, umpel and capitula. Mm -hmm. See, these are the representations. Then next is the cymose inflorescence. The difference here I told you. Here the inflorescence axis is having a definite growth and the flowers are arranged in basic petal succession. That is oldest at the center, younger one towards the periphery. And the cymose is again of three, th five types, solitary cyme, simple cyme, dicasial cyme, monocasial cyme and polycasial cyme. We can see what is solitary cyme. Here the inflorescence is with only single flower and the terminal, it may be either terminal or axillary. If it is terminal, it is called terminal solitary sign. Example, gossypium. Gossypium, you know, that is cotton. And if it is axillary, it is called axillary solitary sign. Example, hibiscus, you know, chamberthi, detura, that is umma. Umma. You might have seen the flower of detura. And second is simple sign or simune, where you can see only three flowers. Only three flowers you can see. And these three flowers are arranged in basic petal succession. Oldest at the center and the two, younger, two the, the, the remaining two are on the lateral sides. And they are the younger ones. Oldest at the center and two younger ones are seen on the lateral side. And here the flowers are arranged in basic petal succession. The oldest at the center, younger one towards the periphery. And the inflorescence axis is having a uh, definite growth. The growth of the inflorescence, inflorescence axis or the pedangle is checked by the development of a flower that is the oldest flower at the apex. That is simple cyme or cymune. Next is dicasial cyme. Dicasial cyme, it is otherwise called biparous. Here you know, 
the the inflow pedangal the growth of the pedangal is checked by the development of a flower at its tip that is the oldest flower and the two lateral branches are again carrying um, they are they are carrying again the again a simple side that means two lateral branches here you see the diagram you can see two lateral branches are having at the at the apex the two flowers and on lighter sides two buds so this is the dicasial side so the lateral branches are showing branching again again they are sh sh showing the branching and the apex is apex of the uh, pedangle is checked by the growth of the oldest flower example is ixora and clerodendron you know ixora that is techi clerodendron you know Clerodendron paniculatum is Krishna Giridam and uh, Infortunatum is Infortunatum is a wild plant that is seen in our roadsides with a bunches of white, fl white flowers and the Krishna Giridam you might have known Ixora you know that is Tech Next is Monocacial that is Uniparasite Here you know See here the two lateral uh, branches are showing again branching but in the case of monocacial the, uh, the in tip of the pedangle is carrying the oldest flower and among the two lateral branches only one is developing and the other one will carry only single flower that you can see here that is monocacial pedangle terminates into a flower terminal bud of the main axis ends in a flower and uh, among the two lateral branches only one is developing and the other carries the flower and this monocacial cyme is again of two types one is helicoid and other is scorpioid helicoid means you know all the flowers on the lateral branches are produced on the same side see among the two lateral branches only one is developing and the flowers on that lateral branches are seen only on one side that is on the same side that is hemelia and the second you know uh, Among the two lateral branches, one is only branching and the other carries only a single flower. Then the branched lateral, the, the, the lateral branch that starts branching will branch in the zigzag manner. It will branch in the zigzag manner. Successive flowers bearing lateral branches are produced in the alternate sites. That is the zigzag manner. Among the two lateral branches, only, st only one is showing the branching and that branching is in the zigzag manner that is scorpioid example is heliotropium hemelia you know that is called um, it's a shrub with a small colored uh, flask which is looking like ixora flask but they are very small that is hemelia Next is, so this is a representation of scorpioid and he helicoid, you know. Scorpioid you can see, monocacial side. This is heliotropy only on one side, but it is in the zigzag manner. But in monocacial helicoid you can see only one side, but, is it, but it is on the same side. Here you can see in zigzag manner, heliotropy. This is hemelia. Next is polycacial side. It is called multiparous or polycacial cyme. Here you know the, the character of the cymose inflorescence, that means the pedangle is having indefinite, uh, sorry, definite growth. Tip of the pedangle will carry the oldest flower. And uh, instead of two lateral branches, here you can see many lateral branches. Instead of two lateral branches, you can see more than two lateral branches, and they are all. Uh, branch again and again to produce many flowers. So in that, in, in this volcation inflorescence, you can see many flowers. They are seen in a cluster. That is polycacial sign. 
the terminal uh, tip of the pedangle will end with a flower that is the oldest one and the lateral branches instead of two it will uh, develop more than two three or four or five and uh, each one will uh, show the branching again and again so you can see a cluster of flowers uh, at the apex example is calotropis you know eric calotropis is eric This, uh, these are the different types of cymosin inflorescences. Next, I can say the special type of inflorescence. That is actually modified inflorescence. Modified type of inflorescence, they are called special type. And all the special types of inflorescence that I have mentioned here are all cymose type. Cymose type of inflorescence, they are modified. So, special types of inflorescence that you have to study are cymose type. One is hypanthodium, second is verticillaster. There is cyathium and the last is thyrosis. We can see the hypanthodium. Hypanthodium, the axis becomes fleshy and it is having pure shape with a hollow cavity inside. Axis is fleshy, which is having pure shape and there is a hollow, inside, hollow cavity inside. And here, the male flowers are see, situated at the... Um, rim of this I think at the uh, periphery you can see male flowers are seen at the periphery and the female flowers are seen at the bottom or at the center male flowers are situated at the osteol region or at the periphery and you can see female flowers at the center that is hypanthodium this is hypanthodium this is very common in the case of ficus al. male flowers are the female flowers are the you can see the this is the hypanthodium and this is an osteol an opening where you can see male and female flowers and I told you male flowers are see, uh, seen near the periphery and the female flowers at the center at the bottom you can see uh, no, not at the bottom at the central region you can see the female flowers and these are the male flowers okay next is verticillaster this is again a special inflorescence of the family Lamiaceae or it is Labiate new name is Lamiaceae Thumbada family Thumbada Labiate or Lamiaceae you see here also this is a cymos inflorescence but it's a special type you can see in the axle of the leaves on the axle of the leaves you can see uh, the flowers are arranged so in each node you can see flowers each nodal region is actually covered by cluster of flowers. Actually, it is starting as dicasial sign, but it will uh, turn into monocasial. So, in each node, you can see the the at uh, the region of uh, the axle of the leaves, you can see some monocasial sign is developing, and it is covering the encyc encircling the entire node. So you can see the verticillus uh, tumbel in the gana poor day and down that is seen at the nodal region that is clustered at the node that is the verticillus. So it's a special type and you can see here this is a type of cymos where the axle of the leaves will uh, uh, will carry the monocasial sign. Okay. Next is uh, this is the diagrammatic representation Lucas Lecondle axle Nariya Pukalana. I think in a noku. There is node on This is another node. You can see the uh, this is the oldest flower in this node. E node no kigolo. Oldest flower here. This is also oldest flower. Then you can see two lateral branches. And our branch, each branch will show the branching again in the monocasial manner. Two lateral branches will develop, but each last each lateral branch will uh, show the branching uh, in monocasial manner. It is it starts branching in the monocasial manner. And that branches will, you know, what is the peculiarity? It will branch again and again and it will cover the entire node. That's why the entire node is covered. So, Oro Saltham, it is covering. Here it is covering Anganepo, it is covering the entire node. Here you see, this is a somewhat bigger illustration. That This is the oldest flower, one and two, you can see two, three, four. This is the, two lateral branches are I see in the, and this lateral branches are branching. 
in scorpio it might be two then three is that another one four is fourth is another one here is two three four similarly here and all this will cover it fourth one and the fourth one here will meet together it will cover the entire uh, node that is the uh, what is last that is seen in lamiaceae or in labiate that is in lucas next you can see sciathium that is the third one it's again a special type and which is seen in the family euphorbiaceae that you cannot see the family euphorbiaceae it is seen in the genus euphorbia genus euphorbia you can see sciathium inflorescence it is looking like a single flower sciathium it is small it is uh, having a united bracts which form a cup shape involucre the, uh, the involucre is cup shape and that is formed by the union of the involucre uh, uh, bracts and uh, here the <coughs> that cup is carrying you can see the diagram do you see this is the diagram of the sciathium this is the cup which is made up of involucre involucre cup that is made up of bracts and you know at the brim of this uh, involucre cup you can see nectary glands and inside which sridhikana you can see only single female flower this is the single female flower and many male flowers single female flower and many male flowers are the peculiarity of this uh, sciathi inflorescence and that is seen in the genus euphorbia of the family euphorbiaceae you can see it sciathi many male flowers and uh, another peculiarity is ma male flowers are represented by stamens only ningal endha ningalku endha doubt undavum male flowers are represented by stamens only this is the stamen so the the single stamen is representing a single male flower so you can see many stamens and each one is representing a male flower similarly single female flower is representing a sorry the a pistil is representing a single female flower a pistil it is called pistil or gynecium that is representing a single female flower so you can see a single female flower here it is represented by pistil here you can see one and two and three nine male flowers and they are all represented as nine stamens okay that is in the case of euphorbia genus sciathi inflorescence next is thyrosus thyrosus means it's a mixed inflorescence where you know pedangle go indefinite grow indefinitely indefinitely the growth of the pedangle is uh, in that uh, in the fridge and the pedangle flower flowers on the pedangle are arranged in acropetal succession but these flowers are showing racemous character you know racemous and at each need of the uh, sorry at each node of the pedangle you can see bracts are present and in the axle of the bracts two symbol signs appear in the world the two symbol signs are appearing in the world you see see this diagram no go schematic representation are the entire inflorescence is looking like racemos but in each node the flowers are flowers are arranged in cymose cluster flowers this is this is osimum tolasiyana no kandalu racemos appearance aanu but at each node you can see cymose cluster cymose cluster adana parnadu mixed type and the pedangle is having indefinite growth because it is an Uh, type of racemos you know not like that of the other three and the pedangle clusters of flowers are arranged in acropetal succession and at each node of the pedangle bracts are present and in the axle of the bracts you can see two simple cymes appear in the world it's a characteristic feature of cymos so you see two two cluster of flowers okay that's all about the different types of inflorescence so now i am stopping